Hi everyone and welcome to episode 8 of This Homespun Life. I'm Lorianne and I'm coming to you from rainy South Florida. Uh, it's Sunday, February 23rd and uh, welcome. Glad you all are here to see what's going on. Um, if you are returning, thank you so much. I'm so amazed that you guys are coming back to see what's going on. I appreciate it. And if you're new, thank you for trying me out. I, I hope you like it and um, hope you come back. So let's get started with what I finished. I have my notes over to the side here, so you're going to see me looking every now and again. But um, let me show you what I got finished this week. Uh -huh. I have a pair of socks. Look at that. I have my um, vanilla socks. Got them both done. Um, as, as, and as you can see, they're kind of matchy matchy. I love it. So this is the Knit More Girls vanilla sock pattern with a fish lips kiss heel. Um, I, I had to do some finagling to make the stripes match, which is fine. I, it was fun trying to make these work out, but I'm so happy with the results. So absolutely happy with the results. Um, as I said before, these aren't for me. These are for, uh, my friend who came to visit during Christmas. So I'm going to put these in the mail to him this week. Um, I do not have sock blockers. So, I I don't know if I should really wash them before I send it or just send it to him this way because um, I don't have anything to block them out with. But um, I love them. I love the way they turned out. And uh, did the kitchener on the heel and on the heel, on the toe. And um, I love it. If you guys have not tried the Fish Lips Kiss heel yet, seriously, give it a shot. Um, the pattern is one dollar on Ravelry, but it is so worth it. Amazing construction, no holes, no gaps, and it fits like a dream. It feels like a glove on your heel. So if y'all haven't tried it, give it a shot. Uh, I think you like it. So that's it. Uh, let me show you the yarn I used. It was Patton's Croy Sock Stripes in the rusty stripes colorway and I got this at Michael it took uh, two two skeins of yarn and um, it was cool it was fun I like it I'm gonna get some more of this um, type of yarn and try some more socks out so those are the only things I finished this week uh, they were done on US size 1 2.5 millimeter DPNs what I'm currently working on is, as you all remember, my Pound the Pin Cardigan by Amy Christophers, or Christophers, I can never pronounce her name and I'm so sorry, but I am trucking along on this one. I, as you can see, this giant pound of yarn, this is, um, leave loops and threads. Uh, or is it Lime Brand? Pound of Love in the Antique White colorway. And uh, let's see. So I finished the ribbing. It's a bottom up cardigan. Finished the ribbing, finished um, the body section, and I have separated for the fronts and the back. So you can see this is the right front. This is the left front, and they're on waist yarn. I, um, what do you call that? Bound off for the underarms, and I'm currently working on the back. Let me see if I can show that to you a little bit better. So I'm working on the back, and that's what's on the needles. I am doing this on US size 6. 4.0 millimeter needles from Knit Picks on their um, interchangeable circular. And so I'm loving it. It's going on well. I had not been giving it a lot of attention because I wanted to get the socks done. But since I got that done uh, last night, I'm going to be spending a lot more time working on the cardigan. I'm actually going out of town in April, um, the middle of April, going up north. So 
I would love to be able to wear this for the couple of days that I am going to be up there. So can I get this entire thing done in a month and a half? Can I? Please say yes. I'm going to push. I'm going to really push through and try and get this done. Because I, I also want to see how it's going to look. Because I think it's going to be a really, really pretty cardigan. So there you go. That's what I'm working on. Um, so that's my other work in progress. What I'd like to get started with um, is this pattern called the Foliage Hat by Irina Dmitrieva. I've had this in my queue for a minute and I've been thinking about um, making it and so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and, and give it a try. Let me show you the yarn that I want to use with it. So this gorgeousness is Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash Sport. Uh, it doesn't say the color name but I believe it was called Eggplant. And I got this through Webs. Oh, they were having a sale. As you can see, it's a 100% superwash merino, 50 grams, 136 yards. Um, the pattern calls for 180 to 190, 180 to 190 yards. So I have two skeins of this. I'm hoping I don't have to use both because I kind of like it and I want to make something else with it. Oh, and it's matching my nails. Yay! I oh, honey, by the way, this nail color is from Ulta and it's called Ultraviolet Femme. I am so in love with this nail color. It is not even funny. I've gotten so many compliments on it. So I guess I chose the right color, right? It's gorgeous. And I show you some other cute stuff I got during the week. But this is what I'm looking to start working on for this week because I'm going to need a new purse project since the socks are done. So let me know what you think. I, I think they'll be cute, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, so let me, I'm just running through this, goodness. Not much happened this week, guys, I'm sorry. So let's talk a little bit about acquisitions. Hang on. Okay, on to acquisitions. Um, to set the mood this week, I got um, a pair of candles from Home Goods. You can see the brand here, and the scent is Gardenia and Lily. I'm actually burning one right now in uh, my bedroom. So, this is what it looks like. Um, I got a pair of these for $10. And um, I'm surprised. I thought it would have been more fragrant, but it actually is very, very subtle. I'm not one that likes floral scents because it aggravates my um, sinuses. But these are really, if you could call it, gentle. So um, it hasn't been bugging me at all. So if y'all would like to go check out Home Goods and see what they have on sale, uh, you could maybe try these out and see if you like them. So just let you know. So I'll move that over here. Now, I went to, I have no yarn to show y'all. But uh, I went to the library a couple of days ago after work and I picked up a couple of books. Now these two are, um, they were on sale at the library. So they were a dollar a piece. So I bought them. I am such a huge Sidney Sheldon fan. I love his work. I've read Best Laid Plans before. It is amazing. I've read it maybe twice already guess what I'm gonna read it a third time <laughs> I love this novel I love the way he writes um, I've read maybe three of his books and so I figured why not get it um, and this one is brand new to me the sky is falling I've finished chapter one already it's interesting so far but I, I haven't gotten into the vibe of it yet so Let's see. I'll let you guys know how it goes. But I'm afraid to start his books because whenever I do, I get kind of strung out on it. And I can't put it down. So I'm up like 2 o'clock in the morning reading when I should be in bed. So, But I'll let you guys know how it goes. So that's that. Now, yarn related, I borrowed this book 
from the library. It's called Knitting Block by Block by Nikki Epstein. And as you can see, it's um, blocks for different projects. And you know I'm working on my uh, sampler afghan, which truthfully I haven't been working on recently. I'm sorry about that. But um, I have to get back to it. I wanted to get those socks done. And then now I can finish up some of the leftover projects I have just sitting around. So let me show you a couple. You see I have a lot of stickies on here. So let me show you. First of all, it's a gorgeous book, can I just say. I love the picture pictures on the front so let's start and I'm gonna try to not show you <laughs> the um, the projects that are in there I tagged this picture solely because of the shoes how cute are these shoes I would so rock them ha! jacket not not so much but um, let's see what else I got going up here it's broken down into different categories different types of blocks they start off with the basics, some basic ideas. Nothing much to see here. Um, some basic knitting styles. But I really liked this one. I really like this one, the Celtic Knot. How cute is that? Oh my god. And even the scallop lace frame. But here's the deal I am so lazy. <laughs> I don't know if I'd actually put the effort into making all of that, <laughs> but they are gorgeous. And I'm always thinking about ways to incorporate this kind of design into projects I'm working on. Oops, there you go. I just showed you some patterning stuff. Oopsie. Um, let me cover that up. Next segment is called ornament, or, ornate <laughs> applique embroidery and cords. This side was really fun for me. I liked it a lot. So look at this. This one is gorgeous. The Highland Fling. Again, I am so lazy, but I would really definitely try this out. Can you imagine that on a decorative pillow for your home? I mean, seriously. This is gorgeous, but I hate the way it makes the edging on the project look. Now, maybe they didn't block this piece before they photographed it. I don't know. But um, it's a really cute pattern really cute design they had some good ideas in this one um, let's see what the other sticky where the other sticky went fiddle fern so they're using a like a basket weave base and then they're tacking these pictures onto it nice very nice again I'm showing you patterns which I shouldn't be doing alrighty so the next area was called creative color work. Now this one had some, I, I don't do color work, let's put it that way. So a lot of these things I would not try, but they were interesting to look at. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't do them. This one on the other hand, I would definitely try. It's called Up Art. I love the um, the play on colors here. That is gorgeous. I would I would definitely try that. These are cute. This looks like embroidery, doesn't it? It's gorgeous. Um, I mean, they had some cool ideas, like this um, comedy tragedy square. I'm just scared of all that, all those edges, all those um, bits to weave in. Ugh, can't be bothered with all that. Um, how cute is the panda? Look at the panda. Oh, still wouldn't knit it though. But anyway, it's cute. <laughs> ah, and for all of us cat lovers, the kitty cat in the window. Funny enough, I think I would try this. Because there's such big segments of color that there wouldn't be a lot of floats. There wouldn't be a lot of floats to deal with. So, I think that would be cute. So, the next segment. Oop, again, I keep showing you all this stuff. Whoopsie. Next segment is special techniques. And they I really at some point want to try double knitting. It it seems intimidating to me, but I think it's something that is so versatile and it can create such beautiful pieces that I would really, really like to try it. It's just what would I do? I'd have to make it as a project for myself. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't give it to anyone because that takes too much time and effort. Uh, we have a little entrelac up top. Um, got some diamonds with beads. Uh, some ferrile, steeped ferrile on top of it. Wow. All right. Steeped ferrile. These are really nice. These textured stitches. As they call this, the honeycomb, and this is smocking. I don't really know what smocking is, but I'm gonna have to search for it. These are really, really nice. Again, it just looks kind of a little bit intimidating. <clears throat> Um, diamonds, all right. Some scallops. This is really pretty. This reminds me of the square I'm working on for um, my sample afghan right now. It's I have a thing about leaves, if you haven't noticed. I'm about to start um, the foliage hat. I'm doing leaves for my blanket. And there's this. I really like this. This is really pretty. And then they get into some embossing and I'm not really into embossing so I'm gonna skip all that. Ah pictures don't look don't look don't look okay so the next segment is called cables and counterpanes. All of the projects in this section are freakishly gorgeous. Freakishly gorgeous. I don't do cables a lot but this is gonna make me try. Look at this look at this pattern it's called angled cables and ribs how gorgeous is this oh my word boxed cables oh the tree oh tree breeze i would definitely make into a a cushion oh my goodness reversible cables we got Whirlwind, um, Rosemary Sprigs. This is really, really pretty. Rosemary Sprigs. I got this cable vision. <laughs> um, this one here, Portal Cable. I mean, that is, can you imagine that on a sweater? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What is this? Cassie's Cable Ladder. Interesting. Um, curvy cables. This one is weird. Like, are they boxes within boxes? Like, are you piecing all four of these together or are you doing this sideways? I don't know. But it looks awesome. It's called X's. Mm, that's okay. Oops. Sorry. And then uh, Regal. That's very interesting too. And again, leaves, because that's just me. Leaves. So all of these projects are gorgeous. I could see them in a variety of places. And like I said, just as with the um, the lace squares that I'm making for the for the blanket. Cables are another thing that I don't have a lot of experience with, so I would definitely try these out just to help my technique and uh, make something gorgeous at the same time. So that is that. And then we're on to eclectic style. Now, I'm going to be honest, not a lot of these were attractive to me, probably because it has the word eclectic in it. It's not very straightforward stuff, but I'll show it to you. Um, yeah, not really fond of a lot of these. Uh, this is cute. Rolling cables. And then we have beaded pod. That is so interesting. But I don't know what I would do with an item like this. I don't, I don't know. Of course, cable bell. This would be great as the, uh, the bottom of a, of a garment. Uh, zippers. Closure, asymmetric closure. Um, yeah, rods, not so much. The woven one is pretty. But again, I'm thinking about work. It's going to take a lot of work. <laughs> but yeah, it's cute. It's very pretty. 
seed stitch cookie twist. How cute is that? Those are gorgeous. This, this, my dear, will be a cushion. The French braid. I don't know how it's done, but I am going to work it somehow. I'm going to figure that out. It's too cute. Yeah, this is where we get into some textured projects. Um, ruffle, pod, ruffle and pod. Um, okay. This is gorgeous. Layered ruffle. That is really nice. Let's figure out how that's done. That's done. Um, I'm not going to show you everything in here because it's not all that amazing. Cathedral windows, gorgeous. The reversible hourglass, nice. And, oops, and we get into patterns, and we're not doing patterns. And then they have a couple of projects in here. Um, they're not all that exciting. They're they're a bit, again, eclectic. Let's call it eclectic. It's it's not necessarily my taste. But let's just show you. This was cute though. This um, melange counterpane afghan. Nice idea. It's kind of like what I'm doing with the other stuff. So I like that. Um, we're going to look at the fairy leaves shrug. I would never wear this. But it's a cute idea. And the model is kind of cute too. So it's a cute idea. Oops, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. And there you go. Um, and the next project. This hat is is so wild. Like, I would never have thought to make a hat using two squares. And just bring them up together at the top. Now the pom-pom is a little bit much. But um, it's a cute idea. I like it. And last but not least, look at it. One block toys. How cute are they? Look at the kitty poo. Oh, that's so cute. And they're all made, as they say, from one block. And then you, you know, do your little embellishments. But that's so adorable. Oh. Anyway, so that's how it ends right now. I am. Oops, I got stuff stuck on here. I am really liking this book. Um, it's again it's a gorgeous book the way it's set up um, it's called knitting block by block by Nikki Epstein if y'all want to check it out it has some cool ideas in there um, you can do garments you can do home decor you can do toys uh, you can do um, clothing accessories and uh, all from blocks so I really like that and um, Let's see. Let's see what I end up making out of it. So that's it for book stuff, book acquisitions. Let me show you some cosmetic stuff I got. And I got two lipsticks on sale. As you can see, they were originally five bucks, and I got them for three fifty. Not that big of a deal, but you know. So here are the colors. They're both from CoverGirl. One's called Everlasting. One's called Impassion. So let's show you Everlasting first. And they've they've been used, so you're gonna see that. It's a red. It's a red color. It has gold sparkle in it. And I wore this I wore this to work on Friday. It's a pretty color. I'm just not a fan of sparkly bits in my in my lipstick. And this is as you can see, it's a gorgeous, like golden, coppery color. Um, this is what I'm wearing today, so you saw that in the beginning. Again, it's called, um, it's called Impassion. Uh, the one thing with these lip colors that I haven't experienced in a long time is that they taste and smell like lipstick, and y'all know what I mean when I say that. Um, I haven't had that experience in a long time because I've been using my, all Mary Kay products for so many years. And of course, those products have no scent, they have no taste, they don't 
weird me out. Um, and it really came to a head this morning because I went out to run some errands and then I came back home to uh, make a cup of coffee. And I did. I still had uh, my lipstick on when I was drinking it and it changed the flavor of the coffee. I mean, I could hardly drink it. So, not fond of that. I'm going to go back to my regular Mary Kay products because these are not cutting it. But they were on sale. They were three fifty. Now I know. Along with that, on sale, I also got some nail polish. So um, you can see it was originally six dollars. I would never pay six dollars for nail polish, but I got it on sale at three dollars. So it was cut in half. This is L'Oreal nail color in um, what's this called? Ah, this is called Pop the Bubbles. So it's cute. I mean, it's like a tealy kind of blue with silver flecks in it. Um, like I said before, I'm not one for shimmer. I like a solid color uh, nail polish. But, you know, it's cute for spring. It'll add some life to your outfit. And um, I don't know when I'm going to try it. I need to figure out what my next nail color is going to be. Because this one... This one has kept up really, really well. I've been very impressed with how well it's it's been working out. Um, so I might rock it for another couple of days and then switch, but I need to figure out what my next color is going to be. I'm still feeling dark, but it's almost spring, so I'm thinking I need to transition. So I don't know. Stay tuned. You'll see um, on Instagram whatever I choose to go with. If I choose this one or another one of my other colors. So I'll let y'all know. So that's it for this week in terms of acquisitions and projects I'm working on. All right, guys. So that's it for the projects and the acquisitions I had this week. Um, not much happening, but I did get my socks done. So I'm very happy and very excited I'm glad for the way they came out and I hope my friend loves them. Time to be selfish and work on some stuff for me. And um, I'll let y'all know what's going on with that. Oh, while I'm here, just to let you know, I don't know if I ever showed this to you guys before, but this is my Magrathea. I should give you an idea how it goes. Um... This is done out of lace weight yarn. This is from Highland Handmaids. Her lace weight yarn in the Cardinal colorway. And funny story, this is the first lace, lace project I ever did. Um, <laughs> I know a couple of you are probably laughing at me because I laugh at myself when I think about it. I don't know. I was very, still very new to knitting. And um, let me tell you the story about this shawl. I was very new to knitting. Um, very, very new. I just really started. And I wanted a project to work on. I was on Ravelry. And I got carried away. As we tend to do on Ravelry. And I saw this shawl. I was like, yeah, sure. You know, it, it looks simple enough. A lot of people have done it. Let me try it. So I bought the pattern. Um, bought the yarn from... Helen Handmaids. Now, the yarn came at over a thousand yards in the skein. I had never worked with yarn that came in skein form before. So I didn't know that you had to wind it into a ball before you started working. It's over a thousand yards. It's lace weight. I'd never seen anything that tiny before. So I start knitting the shawl without putting the yarn into a ball. <laughs> yeah. So I I you know what happened. Yeah. So then I got to the point where I have to start on tangling the mess I had made. I lost so many yards of yarn. I eventually realized I took an old um half empty bottle of lotion it's like it was kind of like a little bit thinner than the candle a little bit thinner than the candle and decided to wind the yarn around that bottle so i could use it 
I did that. Then it's lace weight, and I'd never worked with anything that tiny. And um, on top of that, with all that going on, I'd never knit lace before. So I didn't understand. And then on top of that, on top of that, on top of that, the pattern is charted. I'd never worked from a chart before. This is why this will always mean something to me. Always. I went through so much to get this shawl done. <laughs> I learned a lot getting this shawl done. It took me a year or maybe more to get this shawl done. Because I got to a point where I was like, you know what? F it. I put it in a plastic bag in a corner and I didn't look at it for a long time. Once I finally got the idea, got it started, got it moving, because it starts from... Never mind. I was going to tell you how it goes, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that, because it's a paid pattern. Buy the pattern and find out. Um, but I, I got it started. I couldn't deal with it anymore. Finally, like I said, I put it down for about a year, and then I came back. I had done some more projects. I would worked on um, charts some more, and then I came back to it, and I said, no, no. I'm finishing this shawl and I finished it and I absolutely love it. Every time I wear it out in public, I get so many compliments on it. And this is a special, special project for me. And I will make it again. I may make it in fingering weight yarn though next time. We'll see. But I will make it again. Love it. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this week. I hope you have an amazing, fabulous, wonderful next two weeks. Um, let me know what's going on with y'all. I'm on YouTube. The notes will be on my website, thishomespunlife.com. I didn't put up the notes last week. I am so terribly sorry. But I will. I will put up the notes. Um, this homespunlife.com. I'm on Instagram as Homespun Life. I'm on Pinterest as This Homespun Life, I believe. Um, and that's pretty much it. Ravelry as Homespun, Home Dash Spun. I have not started a Ravelry group. I just, I don't know. Should I? Maybe I will. And then there's the shop, which I still haven't given a lot of time because I still don't have internet access. But it's at homespun.bigcartel.com if you want to check out what's there. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time.